Hey guys, John's Tech here. Today I have with me these little things called Fingerbots. The purpose of these is to help activate devices that you simply can't just switch out. A perfect example would be the switch my girlfriend can't reach, or something you can't simply just add to your smart home. This can also be helpful for people with disabilities if they can't activate certain switches. Adaprox have been kind enough to send these products out for me to review, so thank you for sponsoring this video. Let's get into it. I have with me two finger bots, a hub and a tool bag to customize the finger bots. They're quite small as you can see in the palm of my hand, being 34.5 millimeters all around. They weigh 38 grams. The box also includes two sticky pads. The hub that comes with these is also quite small, not any thicker than my finger. We have a USB to micro USB cable that is about 20 inches long. In the tool pack, there are some wooden blocks to position the finger pots at different heights, extra sticky pads, and a few other arms so it fits different situations. Setting up the finger bots. To set up this finger bot, we first need to take the back off. I find it hard to pop her off with my nails, so I had to use a pair of tweezers. Next, there is a tab we need to pull off to get the battery connected. If you scan the barcode on the inside, it will give you the instructions on how to set up the finger bot. Installing the app. Conveniently, this is a QR code on the box which will take you to the app, so you can just install it. Once installed, you'll need to create an account. You will have a couple of pop-ups asking for permission to use your local network and Bluetooth. You will need to accept these so your device can find the finger bots and set up the hub. Installing the hub. Next, you need to plug in the hub. This is the perfect place for me to put it. I have a USB slot here and then the hub can just sit on top of my router. After this, open the Mesh Hub app up and press the plus icon on the top right. Select scan and scan the code on the hub box. Reset the pairing as it tells you to do. Confirm and it pops up pretty quickly. Press the play button and it'll start connecting. You need to make sure you are on the 2.4 gigahertz network and connect the hub to your Wi-Fi. Once connected, you'll get a big green screen saying paired successfully. Installing the finger bots. Now to do the same with the finger bots, it's exactly the same as we just did, but you need to scan the fingerbot box and reset the pairing is on the inside of the fingerbot. Great, I'll do that with my second one and everything will be added. The next step is very important. If you want to use Wi-Fi to control your fingerbots, which you definitely do, you want to add them under the hub group. If they are not, they will only be activated through Bluetooth, which is slow. Tap the hub, then tap the plus at the top right and add both your finger bots. Give that a second to load and they should pop up and be able to use over Wi-Fi now. You can simply bind the devices by going to settings, cloud services and tapping Alexa. Using the finger bots. Right, so I have two finger bots and I have two ideas that I would implement in this hallway. The first one being this little telephone. It basically connects to the gate and I can answer the door and let people in. Um, I have no idea what these four buttons do. As far as I'm aware, they do absolutely nothing. So the idea is I'm gonna tape over that, put a finger bot there, and then I can wirelessly open the gate to my apartment whenever I want. Don't have to touch anything. Second of all, we have a fan up here for the bathroom, which is quite high, it's above the door. My girlfriend can't actually reach it. So if I stick a finger up there, she'll just be able to say a command to, um, or Siri or something and enable it. Here are extra tool arms you can use for different switches. I will just add the longest one because the switch I'm putting this on has a bit of a dip. Now to stick a pad on the finger bot and I will peel this layer off just before placing it down. Remember, you will need to clean the surface down so you can stick the finger bot to it. If it's dirty, the dust and other grubbiness can stop it sticking. I overlapped this with some tape so it wasn't interfering with the buttons and gave it a constant flat surface to stick to. Then it's time to stick the finger bot on. That is on there pretty good actually. I'm surprised how well that is sticking. Here's a test. I used my mobile data and controlled the finger bot remotely. How cool is that? The second finger bot. I wanted to install this one on my bathroom fan. Again, it is important to clean the surface so it can stick well to it. Right, I've paired this to my app and these are the remaining switches I have. 
this is the one I'm probably going to need because it will allow me to turn the switch on and off by sticking to it. There you go, swapped it out. Now let's go set it up. It's the perfect example of having the wooden blocks. You need them to stick out a bit here so the finger block can push up and down on the switch. Here I am testing the height and if it's enough for the blocks to work. I calibrated the distance for the arm to travel so it fits perfectly with the switch. This will allow me to toggle it on and off without the finger bot losing its grip. Once I was happy, I installed the blocks and the finger bot on top. Hey Siri, turn off bathroom fan. Okay, done. Your device has been turned off. That's it for this video. To conclude, this is quite handy for switches you can't reach or for items that cannot be upgraded to your smart home. They can also help people who struggle with disabilities and have trouble accessing certain switches. I'll leave all the links in the description below. If you did like this video, please give me a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.